Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Alicia from Alicia Be Creative and today we're doing a tutorial on this neon rainbow stripe tumbler with a neon rainbow drip. So of course everything I use will be listed and linked down in the description box down below. You can even find discount codes to save you a little bit of extra money. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. All right, so to get started, I am working with a 20 ounce tumbler from Maker Flow Crafts. And we're gonna use this beautiful pattern that was actually created by Myra from Myra Makes It. So she created this in one of these subscription boxes from quite a while ago that was all neon based. It was all of neon glittered colors and then matching neon vinyls to go with. So I've yet to use this cute little neon daisy pattern. So we're gonna be using that today. So I'm just kind of using my cup as my guide to figure out how much of this print I'm going to actually need. I really wanna keep the the focal point and focal pink section on the cup as well because I want all of the neon colors to be represented on the cup that way when we do the corresponding colors kind of all of those colors are also present there so again just using my cup as kind of my guideline to kind of trim and make sure that I can make the pink section sort of the upper but also center section of the cup here and trimming off any of the excess along excess along the um, sides making sure that I'm just cutting off any of the extra vinyl I'm not going to need to wrap this tumbler so once I have trimmed up my tumbler I am going to go ahead and get this wrapped onto my cup so we're going to use my cup cradle as I typically do I like to line the pattern up on my cup first making sure it's going to kind of fit before I place it directly in my cradle which is going to keep my pattern flat against my cup and keep everything kind of lined up so that I don't have to worry about it going on a little bit lopsided while I'm using my cup cradle here. So once I find that that is pretty secured and I'm ready to adhere this to my cup, I'm gonna go ahead and just peel the backing off of one side. I cut anywhere from one to two inches off one side of the backing and then I'm going to adhere that section first, making sure to smooth it out from the center section all the way to the edges and ensuring I don't get any wrinkles or bubbles as I am smoothing that section up. Then I'm going to turn the cup over and I like to place the vinyl on rolling the vinyl kind of away from me and having the cup directly in front of me I'm better able to see you know any bubbles or any wrinkles I might encounter as I'm trying to roll the vinyl on that way you can kind of catch them early and pull up and readjust my vinyl versus doing it the other way where I feel like I have less I have I have less ability to see kind of how the pattern is going on in the other direction and typically I end up with more bubbles and more you know wrinkles in my pattern vinyl than I want so I'm just going to continue to use a combination of both my hands and my squeegee tool to help me smooth this vinyl on, really making sure to get this on as smooth as possible, using that soft felt tip of the squeegee tool to smooth out my vinyl as I move through and roll the vinyl on to the rest of the cup. You guys know this is my favorite way to apply vinyl because I can always be guaranteed that it's going to go on straight and not lopsided and wonky, and I have much more control of getting everything sort of situated and onto the cup. So now that I have the vinyl on the cup, we're going to go ahead and trim off the excess vinyl on the other side. So I'm just using a bit of painter's tape to set right along the line where the seam of the two vinyls meet and where the overlap is and then use my craft knife to cut alongside the blue painter's tape where the seam is to get a nice straight line and not a crooked crazy wonky line like sometimes I get if I try and do it freehand. So removing the excess there, you're going to notice I really don't have a whole lot of excess on my top and bottom too much and that was because I cut my pattern pretty close today so I have just a very very fine line of extra vinyl along the top which I'll just cut off with my craft knife easiest way to do this is definitely to use your craft knife but if you find that you're struggling to get this vinyl to come off really easily it might mean that your blade is not sharp enough so I always encourage you to switch out your blades when you are going to be working with pattern vinyl and doing a lot of cut work and vinyl work like this. So once I've gotten the top trimmed off I'm going to now focus on the bottom here. So we're going to go ahead and just pull as tautly as I can the very little bit of vinyl that is kind of over the excess over the bottom making sure to smooth that over the bottom of the tumbler, not getting any wrinkles or anything along the vinyl because we want to make sure that we have a nice smooth section along the bottom. That way we can use our cup edging tool to be able to get a nice straight and crisp line along the bottom edge of the cup. So for this cup, I'm not going to be covering the bottom with anything. I will end up doing a glitter butt potentially on the bottom of this cup. I just decided that I didn't want to cover the bottom 
and kind of leave the stainless steel exposed. It's just another alternative way. There's no right or wrong way to do these kinds of cups, but sometimes exposing the bottom really does cut down at least a little bit when it comes to people who are maybe a little bit more heavy handed when placing their cups down to not cause any, you know, chips or cracks on the very bottom of the cup. Of course, it's not going to save your cup cup in the event that the cup, you know, falls out of your hands and drops on the floor. But for any of our uh, cup users that are a little bit more rough on the bottoms of their cups, sometimes leaving the stainless steel exposed, exposed is a great alternative. So these are the beautiful neon glitter, glitters that we're going to be using from Maisha Creations. Again, this was part of a Glino bundle forever ago, but they are all now very much available on her website, and I will link and list them down in the description box. So we're going to be doing a striped pattern on this cup, and the way that I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to be putting lines of one inch blues painters tape all the way up and down the cup, leaving a one inch gap in between each of my stripes. So where I'm placing the blue painters tape around the entire cup is where my vinyl will be exposed. And then I'm just using just a little sort of like buffer or, you know, gap piece with a little piece of blue painters tape that's going to be where my glitter will go once we get to the glittering process. So of course I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me, you know, apply the blue painters tape all the way around, but I just kind of go back and forth, you know, one piece of tape around, sort of like that guide piece of tape all the way up until it gets to the very top of the tumbler here or the bottom of the tumbler, forgetting which direction I'm moving in. So after I've kind of gotten that done, I am going to go ahead and also cover up the bottom of the cup. That way I can make sure I don't get any paint or anything when we go to spray paint the cup on the bottom of the cup as well. So I'm just going to tape that section off as well, remove my little gap pieces so that we can get into spray painting. So we're gonna use all neon colors and we're gonna do a swirl method with all of the neon paints, which I will list down in the description box. So after we've gotten that swirl done, it's now time to get into applying our glitter. So we're gonna start, start with the neon pink glitter we're using. And again, we're just following the swirl that I created with my spray paint. So we're not really doing a whole lot of blending and ombre because we're using one cut of color. So really you're just covering those sections. You know, it's okay if you get a little bit over into the next colored glitter section because it's a rainbow. It really all does make a really beautiful rainbow gradient all the way around. So you don't really have to focus so much on, you know, ensuring that you're getting a really good blend and ombre. So now moving into our yellow section again with that bright neon yellow glitter. And then again, keeping to go around until I get all the way to the other side of the cup with my final color, which will be my purple glitter. So rainbow swirls are so much fun and I forget how much of a blast I have when I do these. Neon is just such a, it's such an amazing vibe, just so awesome. And I have so many neon patterns that I never get a chance to use. I will say that neon colors for me definitely make me think like either Lisa Frank or give me like summer vibes, but I could not resist when I was going back through my pattern vinyl and saw this vinyl that I had not used. I was like, I have to put this on a cup. I know it's not quite summer yet, but to me, I don't think it's too early to start on summer cups and summer, trend, summer trends now. So finally finishing up with that purple as our final glitter color here. This is what the cup looks like. We're now going to go ahead and tap off any of the excess glitter and we're going to go into a speed session of just me removing all of the tape. So I did do epoxy method glitter application and so I want to make sure to pull up all that tape now and then we're going to set this aside to dry. Then we'll spray seal with clear gloss spray paint and do two coats of epoxy until smooth. So our cup is now smooth and now it's time to get into sanding. Really the only bit of sanding that I needed to do was the top rim. After my two coats of Chaos Resin Liquidy Split, I really got a really smooth finish. And again, these are finer glitters that we use. So again, you're not really running into a lot of issues where you need to do a whole lot of sanding because the glitters are fine. And after those two coats of epoxy, literally you have a really smooth glass-like coat. So now to kind of spice up these stripes here, we're going to add a little bit of silver metallic uh, washi tape that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. So we're just going to go ahead and apply the washi tape along the top and bottom of the glittered sections here, just kind of separating them all together 
to again go for that striped look which was kind of the vibe for this cup so same process I did here almost with the washi tape I like to use my cup cradle to kind of help me ensure that I'm getting a nice straight line all the way around the cup anytime I've ever tried to put a straight piece of vinyl like a vinyl stripe on a cup not using my cup cradle I the the crazy wonkiness that I ends up looking like is always like a hot mess so I definitely encourage you to get something where you can keep your cup stationary um, and still and then just roll your cup it's so much easier to apply vinyl that way so after that, I did seal that, those washi tape lines with a little bit of polycrylic, let that dry, and you could at this point go into another coat of epoxy. I'm going to skip this step because I want to do my final coats of epoxy at the end. So I'm going to go straight into the drip and take a risk here. So I've mixed up 30 mLs of regular epoxy. Today I'm using Flynn Sisters Premium Epoxy. I definitely encourage you to pick this stuff up if you are looking for a glass light coke finish and the clearest glossiest look you've ever had for epoxy on your cups this is the epoxy to get I for sure recommend it so I warmed up my epoxy I've mixed 30 mls I've let it sit for a little bit to let any bubbles that may be in there rise and now I have taken five other medicine cups and split that 30 mls as evenly as possible across all of those cups so we have six colors in total these are all slick fabric paints that I picked up from the craft store and we're going to be using these to give us our neon vibe drip that we're going for at the top of the cup so I can't not have my drip sparkle. So I'm going to add a little bit of moon dust from Vinyl Gallery, which is a fine glitter mica, to my cups of epoxy before I add the paint as my colorant, which is going to give us the neon look. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the paint in each of the cups corresponding colors. I'm trying to keep them in order because I have been known to, if I don't keep things in order to then when I go to apply them when it's time to, I then place things out of order. So I like to keep everything in, in order so I don't mess up the flow in which I want to apply them to the cup. So just a little bit of paint goes a long way. Again, we don't have a whole lot of epoxy in these small coats or these small cups of uh, medicine cups. So I want to make sure I'm not doing too much paint that's going to make my epoxy too stringy, even though we are going to let this too sit quite a bit until it really thickens up. Now, you don't have to do the waiting game like I'm going to do for this process. I waited for about 30 minutes or so. And at that point, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, check it every 10 minutes, you know, stirring it, making sure that everything is starting to thicken up nicely. And when when it's to the consistency that you want your drip to be so you know using your popsicle stick to see how fast or how slow your drip possibly will go down your cup is going to determine when you're ready to um, you know when you're ready to get this drip applied to the cup I like to wait until my I like to wait until it is the consistency of like molasses so kind of a super slow drip this I didn't wait for as long as I should have but I was really impatient to get this done because I wanted to see how beautiful this drip was going to turn out um, so I definitely like to wait though until the consistency is that of like molasses and that way at that point I know it's really ready to go onto the cup and I can ensure that I'm going to get a nice slow drip down the cup that way I don't have to do a lot of turning the cup upside down and you know right side up in order to stop the flow of my drip so now it's time to drip these so we're starting in order and so I did kind of just with my fingers kind of measure out approximately how much of the sec each section around the rim would be with paint that way I can make sure I could get all six colors on there so we're going to go ahead and just use our popsicle stick to apply a little bit of the tinted neon epoxies all the way around the cup here so this you do have to move fast when you're using multiple colors to be able to do your drip so if you're doing a multicolor drip like I'm doing here you definitely have to move quick now again you don't have to choose to do an epoxy drip like I'm doing you easily could have just used those slick paints or the puffy paints puffy fabric paints and gotten a really nice drip I just wanted a little bit more of a thicker drip which you can get with epoxy um, so I do typically like to gravitate towards these kinds of drips with using epoxy versus using my fabric paints just because I can get a little bit of a puffier drip than I can with some of the other options. 
So as I mentioned, I did decide to just wait for my epoxy to thicken up. I didn't mention though, but you could also use different methods to get your epoxy to thicken so that you don't have to wait as long. So things like thickening agents, I have a couple listed in my Amazon store. Um, you could also use cornstarch, which is just a regular household project product that you could use to thicken your epoxy as well to get the consistency to be a thick and slow drip so that you can kind of go through the process a little bit quicker. So just continuing again to go through the different colors, moving as fast as I can and really trying not to make a huge mess as I'm applying the different colorants for the drip around the rim of the cup. One thing that I wish that I would have done is I wish that I would have painted the section around the top rim where my drip was going to go just because these paints were not as... Um, they were a little bit more translucent than I had expected them to be. So when the drip started to, you know, fall down from the rim, it started to kind of not pull away from, but you could kind of see through because the paint is a little bit more translucent than I wanted it to be. So you can see the vinyl a little bit underneath. So I think I probably will go back and do a second drip on top of this. Maybe add a little bit of the neon glitters as kind of like a double drip. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably post that if I end up doing that to my Instagram. So stay tuned for that. But after I've gotten the final color on there I'm just going to touch up any areas that I wasn't really satisfied with so at this point my purple and my pink were a little bit closer than I wanted them to be and they weren't really evenly placed so I went in and placed a little bit more pink to try and even out that section there and then this is the game of tipping it upside down tipping it right side up to just continue to control the flow of my drip so once I'm satisfied with where my drip has kind of landed or stopped at this point, you can then use your heat gun and pop any bubbles and then put this on the turner so that when it's spinning, it's not going to continue to drip down. Now you want to make sure obviously that your epoxy drip is not going too fast that when you put it on the turner that it's going to now swirl from right to left depending on you know which direction your turner is, is spinning. So definitely make sure that the drip has dramatically slowed down before you put this on the turner and get that ready to kind of cure. So this will cure overnight and then this is kind of the final look at the cup so I still need to do my two final coats of epoxy but I am pretty satisfied with this cute neon look. I hope you are too and if you love today's video be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!